Mental health first aid. Yes. It's uh, increasingly you know, on the rise and lots of companies taking it up. Um, wh why do you see that as an important initiative? Well, it, mental health first aiders, is, just to be really clear, they, they perform exactly the same role as a traditional first aider would. So they're not a substitute for medical advice or therapy or anything like that. They just know the appropriate protocol to follow. Mm. So say you're at work and one of your colleagues has a panic attack or they're exhibiting symptoms of depression or completely overwhelmed with stress. It teaches you what the right thing is to say and what to recommend to them in terms of further help and, and advice. And my sense is that, particularly in businesses, the opposite of that is happening right now. So when, when somebody's physically ill, we sort of know the drill because yeah. it's ingrained in our culture. So we go, right, that person's gonna need a little bit of time off and we're gonna text them and check they're okay and we're gonna send them flowers and we're gonna give them a bit of extra support at work. When it comes to mental health, everyone goes, yeah, there's a bit of a, well, we'll just sort of leave this until it blows over and then we'll sort of talk afterwards yeah, kind of thing that goes it, on, yeah. It, there's still this really erroneous idea that people with mental health difficulties are kind of dangerous and violent, and, and that's only true for a tiny, tiny mm. proportion. So people kind of back off and uh, because they don't have the education um, and mental health first aid you know, teaches you, it gives you a formula to, to follow. And my sense is that that is needed. Um, and I launched a campaign called Where's Your Head At? which mm. is to change the law so that there would have to be mental health first aiders in every workplace. And to launch the campaign, we did a survey with Bauer Media, who own um, Kiss and Heat and yeah. Grazia and- all, Used to have FHM, didn't they? I think. Yeah, 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 all kinds of different outlets. But what we found was, that 50% of people who have taken time off work for a mental health difficulty told their boss it was for a different reason. Mm. So whilst if you have diabetes or cancer or you break your leg, we understand that you can recover and you can manage it. With mental health difficulties, I, I think it's still tied up with ideas around professionalism and character. And that and probably bravado desperately as well. needs to change. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's it would be a really important culture shift if we had more mental mm. health first aiders. And when, so someone's struggling with their mental health, what options are there? You look at um, the GP might mm. put you on a big waiting list. Yeah. You, private therapist might be too expensive. We've talked already about some of the creative ways and the community ways that you can get some help, but often, you know, that's not going to be enough. So mm. where do you kind of, where do you kind of stand on that sort of, the private healthcare or the GP route? Well, I mean, I think the first thing to say is that all the evidence shows that the earlier you catch something, the more treatable and manageable it is. To a degree, I think it's about understanding your baseline, your normal, your triggers, and having strategies in place. But unfortunately, the way things are at the moment, you kind of have to go through something in order to arrive mm. at a point where you see that as important. So if you are somebody who is really struggling right now, there's a few things. Um, I think, first of all, it, it, every GP surgery in theory should have one doctor who specializes in mental health. And when you ring up for your appointment, you should request them. Yeah. Because it makes the world of difference having somebody who's trained. You yeah. know, at the moment, mental health is a tiny component of compulsory yeah. And it's a broad training. training that they do, isn't it? So, yeah. 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 Um, and then I would say that where services fail, charities have really picked up that slack. Mm -hmm. So there's some fantastic charities out there who offer, you know, not just helplines, all kinds of services that can help you. Um, in particular, I would say um, Calm, um, Campaign Against Living Miserably, um, Young Minds, The Mix, Samaritans. Um, I'm an ambassador for a charity called No Panic. Yeah. Um, and lots of them have kind of downloadable resources, things that you can um, use because they, they've realized that there is this, you know, big gap in, in the services that are being provided. So they're kind of there, you know, because not everybody can afford private, private therapy. So sure. they're, they're there to plug that gap. And, but where, where charities can't necessarily help is the mm. medication side of things, yes. which is another controversial thing. Where, where do you kind of stand on that? You know, I'm... They all have their side effects, like everybody knows about the side effects, but at the same time, are they helping you to live a more effective and purposeful life in the end? 
you know, out of all the chapters, D is for drugs, as mm. you know, prescription. And that was by far the hardest to write because yeah. people do, they're so polarized on it. And you've got the people who are really anti-medication and they think that there's an agenda there by the pharmaceuticals mm. to kind of, um, I guess, pathologize the, the human condition. And, you know, when I was doing my research, I, um, I talked to a few American people who were saying, you know, literally, they advertise antidepressants on the telly, but for like, oh, are you, are you stressed at work or have you just broken up with someone? And so, you know, where there's a financial incentive, that's yeah. definitely a, a valid concern. Having said that, I take mental health medic medication myself and I know a lot of people who who see themselves being on it for, forever and it helps them to function and I think that's equally valid. So that whole chapter was about trying to balance that and say, look, you, you know, there's a difference between what mental health medication can do for you as an individual and what it tells us about the culture and the society that we live in. Mm -hmm. And I think ideally, we would live in a more mental health friendly culture. Your first port of call, if you went to the doctor with a mental health problem would be therapy and then if that didn't work you'd be given medication sure but at the moment it's, it's the, other way around. the other way around yeah, yeah. sure